Right, so hello there. So, video number three for Create Ween, which is Cooking Pot, and today we are going to create some poses, or at least one pose. So, this is our Cooking Pot so far. Let's just create a... So, we're going to use the outliner to manage our scene, because we've now got quite a few objects in it. So, right click, new collection, and that always drops it at the bottom. Double click, cooking pot. We can click, drag, and hold, and we can also use the mouse scroll button. Scroll, that, move that up to the top, drop that in place, and let's move our pot stuff. That's in cooking pot, not the other pot. Move that up there. What this allows us to do then is yoink and hide the avatar. So that's our pot. Let's put the lid back where it was. So we've got our rotation. So we've still got the sidebar open. And we're in the item tab because we're making an adjustment to a specific object. So we can just zero 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 and we can also zero 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 so what we can do with that is just plonk it on top of the pot so let's just save this as our base save as number nine Because to make the pose or a pose or set of poses or whatever, we have to think a little bit about the type of pose that we might want to create and how that relates to some of the elements that we've got on our object. So, for example, uh, we might do a pose where the avatar is awkwardly carrying the pot, which might mean it being tilted at an angle. So if that were the case, let's just set that in place, that obviously then means that we have a problem with the crock. So we have to make an adjustment to that so that we don't end up with crock doing the same thing because obviously liquids don't tilt like that and obviously we have to join everything together as well but we'll get to that in a moment so we have to make a uh, we have to think about some of the things that we might want the avatar to be doing with the pot rather than just carrying it by the handles and keeping all the contents level if we wanted to do something of interest with the pose, we just have to keep in mind what's going on with the pot in relation to some of the other elements of the object, because that then means... So let's hide the croc. So we can rename these now that we've got a... So we don't need the pot croc. That's the pot. Pot bottom, that's the top. Feet. So that's junk, so we can hide that. Oh, and also what we didn't get to the other day 
is using vertex groups as a way of making selections. Oh, hi, Frenzy. I haven't seen you for a while. Yes, that looks like the pot. Yes, so that's exactly the point. So if we were wanting to do an awkward pose for the character, we have to make sure that we compensate for the contents of the pot and maybe doing things with the liquid. But we'll get to that in a second. So we didn't get to yesterday using vertex groups to aid selection because although we have a number of materials assigned to different sections of the pot, we've got a couple of them shared, so that's the lid and the legs share the same image. So what we can do is use vertex groups. So we're in object data properties. We can use vertex groups as a means to help the selection of our elements when everything is joined together. And as we've got these as separate objects, it makes it easier to just assign these right now before we join. So edit mode, select all, and we just create a vertex group. So click the plus button underscore, let's just call this top. And the underscore just helps us identify because we'll need to set up a vertex group for this mesh as an object that I'm for you will need so that it works. So just putting the underscore there or some other identifier just helps us easily at a glance look at the list because there might be several of them and identify each of the groups that's helping us select elements of the mesh. So create the group, assign, deselect, double check. So that's the lid. One for the pot. Select all. Underscore pot. Assign, double check. And we'll call that top part. Croc. Assign double check. Then the legs. Whoops. Sign. Let's double check because that now means that when we join these all together, let's just join them. So, although we have materials, let's just switch to wireframe. Make sure nothing is selected. So we have our materials we can use as a selection basis. But that obviously selects everything that's using that material. Whereas if we use our vertex groups, we can select the legs independently of the top. So, so this is one of the reasons why we need to know the kind of pose that we might want to make because if we lower the croc, it exposes the handle bits, the, the indentations caused by the handle. 
So we can either leave those because it's a cast iron pot and they usually have those sorts of indentations. Or if we wanted to, again, depending on the object, we could fill those. But that means updating the UV map to accommodate those elements. And we need to watch out for what we can see now. So what we want is for this pot smoothing to go smoothly across all of these faces and it doesn't because we've got the hard edge poking through. So if we do this what we might have to then do is Select the handles and separate them or split them. Split selection. So split selection. That means we can just move these aside for the moment. clear the sharp edge that makes the smoothing go a bit wonky because those faces are probably pointing the wrong way so we need to check our face normals so for that we want to be in viewport overlays and we want face orientation So we can see that the faces that we've created are pointing the wrong way. So everything should be blue facing the outside, essentially, aside from the rim. And everything that's red needs to point inwards. So let's switch those. So that is, where's the normals? Normals flip. So disable, and there we have our pot, and we can move the handles back. But they won't cause any problems. So let's Let's tilt that. So we're going to tilt the croc. Oh, we need to adjust the UV map. So So it's mapped the wrong material to those faces. So where's our materials? So we're going to change the color just so that we can see this. Yeah, so those are the wrong material. So select, select the correct material, assign. That drops them into place. And we just need to double check our UVs. Whoops. So those are okay. Those are okay, but we're going to have to 
make some adjustments to the UV map because we've now got a couple of elements that need to be accommodated on the map that we don't have room for. Because if we keep those in place and we do some handle painting on these areas, because those UVs are sat on top of the new faces that we created, as we can see, the UV or the handle, I should say, is represented on those UVs because the two sets are sat on top of each other. So what you'll end up with is a bit of disparity between these areas of the pots insides and this area of the pot inside and we don't want to do that. So we have to rejig the UV map a little bit. So select and select just move those down out of the way. Select the rest of the pot, so selection, invert. Whoops, that selected everything. We didn't want to do that. And we're going to have to I think we're going to have to just rescale the UV a little bit, which means that we'll have to re export it. So, this is one of the reasons why you, generally speaking, want to try and get your UV maps sorted out before you export them. So, let's just straighten this up a little bit now that we're doing this. Don't have to make these exactly the same, but so we're doing a click drag selection. We're going to disable those two pins, so UV unpin. Island, just separate the two out. Scale them up a little bit, rotate them, and stick them, whoops, stick them on the side here with the space that we've just created. Let's tidy these two faces up a little. That's where the handles were. And then re export this. So UV export UV layout. Whoops. So this is pot UV. So it's PNG, fill opacity one, because we want to see the faces. 
everything else is okay. Export it's image editor. Let's find the image. So pot. Right, so this is the old UV when it opens. So that's the old one. And this is now the new adjusted one. So the uh, the pot itself, the pot body, doesn't occupy the entirety of the UV area now, so we've had to make space for the handles. So save that. What did we call the old one? Just pot. Export. PNG export pot map. Then we can bring this back into Blender. So we want shading. So that's the pot with the, the wrong UV. So click the file icon. Find the image, there it is, and it automatically assigns itself. And that's that sorted out. Right, so let's just hide the lid for the moment. So top, select, H for hide. Then we can use croc, select, and just fiddle with this to make sure it's scaled. It is scaled to the right size. So let's tilt this. So this is where it's going to get a bit tricky because we obviously get we are in local but we're going to have to switch to normal what we're going to have to do is edit vertices and get those close to the edge so we don't poke through the mesh don't need to be super duper accurate just so long as the thing isn't poking right through the mesh right so I've got it at an angle you can do something more complicated if you want. Let's unhide mesh. Where is it? Hide. Where is it? There it is. Show hide. It's moved it. So show hide, reveal hidden. So I wonder what we could do with the pot lid. We 
Whoops. Falling off. Maybe. So, we're about ready to try getting this sorted out for a pose. So, let's just save this. We need to set it up as an accessory first, so skeleton. We want to position it roughly where we want it to be. Oops. So we need to rotate this around. Like so. Let's go back into the pot and adjust the crock. So this is obviously a little tricky when it comes to doing more complicated items like this. But with this, you can't really see inside of the pot too clearly so let's just hide the meshes Right, so adjust the top. So this is one of the reasons why um, this is one of the reasons why you want to, when you're working on your projects, you need to version save. Because obviously, once you join everything together, there's essentially no going back. I mean, you can undo to a certain degree, but you can't undo all the way back to a starting point, for example. So that's why you version save. So it's important to get into the habit of doing that, because if you were doing something like this and you weren't quite happy with it 
it's difficult to reset all of these rotations that we've been doing. It's difficult to reset these so that the object is facing upright and it's standing on the ground. So once you've started doing this, there's no going back. So that's why it's important to version save. That's a big pot. So, uh, which bone is it going to be best to attach this to? to be pelvis which is this bone at the back so for that everything is already joined together for our object hang on let's save this save as 11 oops Right, so edit mode. So we're now prepping this for an accessory item. Select all. We need to create a vertex group called double click accessory. No, it's attachment. Attachment root. That's uppercase A and uppercase R, R for root. Assign. So select, deselect, just to double check. And that doesn't interfere with any of our other groups or vice versa. So, I mean, we can selectively deselect elements or select them. Oh, that's a crop. Legs. So that's our pot. Let's just adjust its height a little bit again. Because the pose I'm thinking of, well, we'll see. Right, so that's attachment root. Armature, modifier, and we want an armature. We can click the dropper, that's this little icon, and click on the armature we want, pelvis node. So that should now select that go into pose mode because we've selected an armature we should now find that we can select these bones and they control the pot there are two of them it's not letting me select the other one where's the other one gone Yeah, so there's pelvis, attachment root, and attachment node. We want attachment root. So let's just do a quick test. Uh, so mesh, let's double check, let's rename this pot.
part dot mesh. So select the mesh, select the armature, export FBX. So we're exporting an accessory, so we want selected objects. Everything else is OK. Geometry, that's all right. Armatures, always disable. Add leaf bones regardless of the item. Don't need any animation, so disable that. File name's OK. Location's OK. FBX export. So let's get this into IMVU. This is just to check that the item works. So drive new product. Um, female accessory for now. So that's the female accessory. We're going to replace that. So FX import, load FBX. And we want accessories, which is cooking pot, 11. Oh, there's no skeleton. It's in hide. It's not picked up our meshes. root let's push that up to the top so we're using these arrows that's all right that's linked up the armature is controlling the pot so let's just try that again Let's just save the file, save as 12. So this is what happens when you're making accessories. All right, so mesh, skeleton, export, FBX, selected objects, that's all right, geometry, that's all right. Disable, add leaf bones, bake animation disabled, save over that. Let's try re-importing. Load FBX. Cooking pot. There we go. It can be a bit finicky sometimes. No idea why it is like that. So it's brought in our mesh, pot.mesh. So click configure. Apply scale 0 0.01. It's got our mesh. We want that to be zero for the mesh ID. It's got our materials. So all we need to do now is import. And that's all right. Overriding the default, import changes, apply changes. And there is our pot. Oh, it's not overridden the mesh for some reason. Oh no, it's not zero, it's two for females. Let's do that again. Close that. No, let's do that again. Yeah, so the ex the mesh ID for male accessories is zero. The mesh ID for females is two. So yay, I'm for you for not getting those sorted out. Right, so let's do that again. At least we know that it imports. Cooking pot. Yep, there's a pot. There's the so mesh scale 0 0.01. Mesh ID 2, because it's the female avatar. Whoops. Materials. And then import. There we go. 
Uh, so our, our, um, our crock material or mesh section is missing or the faces are backwards. We'll find out in a second. Uh, we want config and we need this to be pelvis node and there is our pot where it needs to be let's just check the materials so it's brought in the material so it could be that our crock mesh let's just do to two-sided yeah it's the, the faces are facing the wrong way so we need to correct that. So that's what we've got so far. So the accessory does work. So to check that face orientation and yeah, they're paint pointing the wrong way. Deselect croc. Select invert. Normals flip. Disable that. Let's export that again just to double check. So what else was? Everything else is okay. So we don't have to worry about the lid at the moment because what we can do with that is just enable two-sided for that. So mesh, whoops, skeleton, export again. Selected objects, geometry, armature, no bones. Import, so let's do that again. Let's try using the male avatar this time so that we can see that it's pretty much exactly the same. So again, the glasses, we're going to replace those. Cooking pot. So it's brought that in OK. 0 0.01. Mesh ID 0 this time. Materials. Import. Import changes. Apply changes. It appears at the head, and obviously the crock is the right way around now. Config. Hell, this node. So there is the pot. And obviously we can then just two-sided for that, two-sided for that. And we can see now what we were talking about previously with the handle. So we do have the handle where it originally was. And it's not causing any problems because we've separated it or, or we've detached it so that these faces can be properly lit with respect to the rest of the inside of the pot. But it also then means that the edge around the handle is a hard edge. So it looks like a hard line and that's what we actually wanted. Right, so with that tested and working, and if you wanted, you could self illuminate the crock so that it ignores the lighting. Right, so with that done, let's make a pose. So let's just save this. Save as 13. Right, so for this, we need the pose file. So we've got our project. So that's where the pot needs to be. So we set it up 
as an accessory as if it were just to be an accessory item. So we position the item where we are expecting it to be so that we can then build the pose around it. So new general, just to reset the file. And then what we want is the female pose file. So drop that into Blender, open, or let's use the alternative pose file because this one's a bit, bit weird to work with. So file, general, uh, it's that one, open. So this is the updated pose file that makes a bit more sense than the other one. And that is, let me just drop the link in for that. So this is the start of files. So for projects like this, you want the pose starter file and the, where's the accessory? What did I do with the accessory pose file? Oh, it's included in the poses. Right. So. Yeah, so all the all the starter files associated with the avatar, so that includes the accessories, clothing, poses, they're all in one pose file. And then everything else is in their own. So you want the alternative pose starter files for this or the alternative Well grab them grab them both. Clothing and um, poses, right, so that's that. Where's YouTube gone? There it is. So this is the pose file. And what we need to do to make accessories that have poses as part of the product. So we're not actually making an accessory. Uh, let me just open another version of Blender. So it's important that you understand that Where is the accessory file? So this is the accessory starter file. So anything that is to be used as an accessory, so that would be rings, hats, hair, uh, even, well, to a lesser extent, shoes, but anything that is not clothing is built using the accessory starter file. So you have to use this file to actually physically make an accessory type item. So that is different to an accessory item as a category in the catalog. So although our pot will eventually be an accessory item in the catalog. It's not actually an accessory item in its fundamental makeup. And it causes a lot of confusion because obviously they're, they're labeled the same thing, an accessory and an accessory, but they're not the same thing. So an accessory is not an accessory. So try and wrap your head around that. But basically, if you use the accessory skeleton, 
then you're not necessarily going to be making an item that can be used as an accessory that then has a pose. So it's, it can get a little confusing. But be clear that if you're going to include a pose with your item, so with our pot, if you're going to include a pose with it, it's not technically an accessory. It's essentially a glorified clothing item, basically. But you have to use the accessory item, uh, the accessory starter file, in order to make your initial project. So with that out of the way, as confusing as it is, what we need to do here to make the pose is file, append, and we're going to bring in the pot that we just made. So we need to browse to where the pot is. And we want number 13. So when we are appending anything, the blend files, the dot blend files, act like archives. So they act like they behave like zip files or RAR files. So select append and it'll drill down into the file or the project as if it were a folder location. So we want the object folder. So double click, then we need to find our pot. There it is, pot.mesh. So select and then append. And our pot appears in our project. So before we do anything, let's save this, save as. This is 14. And then we compose. So to create the pose, all we need to do is select individual bones and literally just maneuver, uh, maneuver, manipulate them using the widget that we can see. Generally speaking, we just want to rotate them but we can move some of them. But speaking of moving, if you need to move the avatar, as in reposition it, always use pelvis node. Don't use ever female O3 master root. That has to stay and must remain where it is in the pose file. So don't touch that move pelvis node. So in this example, we're going to move that forward and create a pose where the avatar is awkwardly trying to balance the pot. So we're selecting individual bones using the handles of the widget As with the mesh, we're just carefully manipulating our bones to create a pose. And we just do them one at a time. Let's twist that. And when we do this, as we manipulate the bones and as they are positioned, we're inserting or updating the keyframe data that's in the timeline. So each one of these little dots is a pose or frame marker that contains the positional information for each of the bones that we are manipulating. So as you can see, it highlights the bones that we as we select them and if we were to let's just move that it automatically drops a keyframe in there so if there are no keyframes in the timeline 
So the frame that you have, the slider or the scrubber, which is this blue thing, if there are no frames, it'll create a new marker. But if there are frames, it'll just override or overwrite frame info that's there. So all we're doing is selecting individual bones. And manipulating them. So for poses, we can manipulate on specific axes using the colored loops. Or, let's just do all of that. What we can do is click drag on the white loop or anywhere inside it and it'll manipulate the bone on multiple axes and that sometimes is better for some bones and some poses because it presents or results in a more natural position of the bone So this might be a very heavy pot. Oops, we should have. So let's undo that. So when you are when you are manipulating the arms, what you want to avoid doing is manipulating this large bone to change the position of the arms because that's the bicep. And if you move that, it tends to let's just hide the skeleton. It tends to make the arm collapse in on itself at the shoulder. So what you want to do, so to undo that, what we want is pose, clear transform, all, and it'll clear all the manipulations for that specific bone, that selected bone. So for the shoulders, we actually want the shoulder bone, which is this square bone, this tiny one. So we are creating a pose where the avatar is trying to stop the lid falling off the pot and at the same time trying to stop the pot from falling. So they've got their elbow or their wrist, yeah, their elbow resting on the pot their hand grabbing out for the lid with the other hand holding the pot against their waist thigh and trying to balance themselves. So it's a very sort of awkward pose. And of course the pot's very hot. Hi Squiblet. So that's one pose. So let's just save this, save as 15. 
what we need to do if we want to create another pose so this is just the pose so this is not exportable to I'm for you yet so what we can do is rename this so it's currently called T pose by default so we can rename this uh, pot one And you can keep the dot pose just so that it makes it clear that that's the information that's imported, exported, imported into IMVU. So let's just check the pose. So we're going to hide the skeleton. Whoops. And that's where the pot is. So we need to. Where's the pot? So we need to create a new group like we did before. Right click, new collection, double click, pot mesh. Move that to the top so we can see it. And then drag our pot up there. So we can hide the skeleton and there's just the avatar visible. So we can see how the avatar relates to the pot And it's on the inside of the pot, so we need to watch out for that. So that's all right. So that's one pose. So let's make another one. Trying to think. Uh, yeah, let's just create. So we've got one pose, let's just save over this, save as, save. So we've got one. So what we want to do, we want to create another pose. So we can use this as the basis of the next pose. So all we need to do is click this icon, this file icon, and it'll create a new instance of pot one dot pose and it'll append dot zero zero one which increases depending on how many uh, poses there are so we've now got two sequences pot o one uh, pot one and we'll name this pot two carries exactly the same data so what we want to do with this first is enable single user so the data is kept in the file and then what we can do select all pose clear transform all and that'll just reset the pose but we should be able to then toggle so there's our first pose and this will be our second pose so let's go with we have to move pelvis node again. Tilt the avatar again. Oops. So this is a heavy pot. We 
because we can keep the pot itself, the mesh, where it is, and we can move the avatar relative to it. So we don't have to adjust our item. We don't have to move the mesh in relation to the avatar. We move the avatar in relation to the pot. So this time another falling pose. But what we want this time is to grab onto the pot. So if the manipulation of bones is a bit too quick, hold the shift key down and that slows the bone movement down. Hold shift. Slows it down. Might have to move this. So of course Madam Witch is not going to be happy with the contents of the pot being spilled by the apprentice. Oops, that's the thumb. So there's another one. Whoops. Heavy pot. So that's our second pose. So let's dis, uh, just hide the skeleton so we can see. A little bit more tweaking. Whoops, and do. And of course, because we're trying to try to get the hand this part of the hand roughly where the rim of the pot is. But we can't just move the hand at the wrist and twist it because that then might mean that the hand or the thumb starts to intersect the pot. So we have to go back to the elbow and maybe twist the elbow and that might mean the hand is then pushed even further towards the pot. So at that then means we have to go all the way up to the shoulder to adjust the arm so that the whole arm 
is swung down away from the pot so that we can then go back to the elbow, adjust that so that we then might be able to swing the arm back up. So we have to do quite a lot of adjustments to try and get the kind of position and the pose that we want. And then let's curl the fingers. This is one, two, three, and then four. And I just leave room for Ouch, that's deforming the thumb a bit too much. So select the bone, pose, clear transform, all. Select the bone, clear transform, all. So. So to create poses, this is basically all it is. In principle, it's not that complicated. We're just selecting individual bones, changing their positions, their rotations, their locations. Trick is making the result look reasonable. Like so. so, there is our second pose. So that's pose two. So we will have to call it quits there because we're getting quite long in the tooth on this one. So the next video will hopefully be the prep setup, export, and import of the poses and the object into IMVU and getting it all sorted out because although we have a pose or we've got two poses actually but although we have the poses we can't these are static poses we can't export these and have them work in IMVU that won't work so we have to do some prep work to get these static poses into IMVU and working properly. So it's probably best actually that we do that as a separate uh, separate video because it can be quite complicated. So we'll do that in the next video and we'll call it quits for today on this one. So we have our object prepped and sorted out and adjusted for the poses that we're creating so we're thinking about how the object is going to be used for our poses. So we've adjusted the crock inside the pot and how the lid is positioned 
relative to the overall pot. We've used vertex groups to help us with our selection, which don't interfere with the item as an accessory or setting that up. And then we've appended that into the pose file so that we can create our poses. We've created two separate pose tracks. The initial one using the default that's included in the file. So these other two are just examples. And then we've created another one. And we now have two poses. So let's just save this. Save as so 16. So in the next one, we'll export all of this, get it all prepped up, exported and imported into IVU. So, thanks for lurking lurkers, and thanks for watching watchers. Do the usual subscription, follow, whatever the button is on whatever platform watching this on, and we shall see you on the next video. So, bye for now.